Hi friends, today we are going to solve a problem on solar central receiver also called solar tower. So uh, a solar tower has got, uh, this is the layout of a solar tower. A solar tower has got many mirrors which we call heliostats and there is a receiver which has been shown in a circle here. This is the receiver here. Okay. and all these are mirrors so many mirrors are there so there are two types of uh, solar towers one where the mirrors are only on one side we call them polar solar tower and there is also a surround filled solar tower where the mirror is on all the sides of the uh, receiver on this side also there would be mirrors okay so we generally use this type of layout where the mirrors are only on one side uh, when uh, uh, when the place where they are uh, uh, where they are to be installed they are away from the equator so the uh, like in uh, northern hemisphere in the places of northern hemisphere which are away from the equator uh, the heliostats field are on the northern side whereas in the southern hemisphere these heliostats field are on the southern side so this is the north direction this is the north direction uh, and uh, so all the fields are on the north side of the heliostat and in the southern hemisphere this field would be on the south side there be no field in the north side where, where all the field would be on the south side now this is because in the northern hemisphere the sun this is the east direction this is the east direction so sun rises in the east goes southwards and then settles in the west so all the time uh, sun uh, sun is uh, towards the most of the time sun is towards the south side so when the sun is towards the south side so uh, if there would be any field on this in this side uh, it, it won't be getting utilized uh, because uh, the the radiations would be blocked by the uh, by the back side of the mirror so yeah. But whereas in this layout, all the mirrors would be effectively utilized because the sunlight will, sun is on this side. And from this side, sun will hit these mirrors and it will reflect the radiation onto the receiver. So this is how uh, a solar tower is laid down. Uh, either they are a polar type like this, if the places are near the equator then the heliostat will be on all the sides right so let's uh, understand first what is a solar tower so it is a actually a uh, concentrating solar thermal technology which is used to convert solar radiation into thermal energy so uh, as i told that the sunlight gets focused on the receiver and it's well suited for the generation of electricity at utility scale so currently uh, we, we we know that a major share of the power generation which takes place are by coal based power plants and coal based power plants are highly uh, carbon emitting plants so in view of the current global warming scenario people are looking for alternative sources of energy particularly uh, clean energy uh, either solar renewable energy either solar wind or biomass etc so among all these technologies uh, this uh, solar central receiver which is based on converting solar energy into heat energy and from that heat energy we produce electricity 
has has the ability to replace the existing coal based power plant this is because uh, they can generate power in uh, in in large amount and if we could integrate storage with it so when even when there is no sun or there is uh, cloudy days or during night that storage can be utilized and uh, power can be generated so that's why this is one of the competing technologies to replace the current coal based power plants so if we see the components of the solar tower as i discussed there are mirrors also called heliostats then there are all these mirrors are fitted with tracking system these mirrors are fitted with tracking system i'll discuss the purpose of tracking system in the subsequent slide then there is receiver here and then there are heat transfer medium so this receiver receives the sunlight okay and this receiver is basically a heat exchanger so when the sunlight falls on this receiver um, uh, then the outer surface of the receiver uh, absorb the sunlight transfer it to a fluid which is flowing there and that uh, fluid uh, converts that solar energy into heat energy and carries it to the power plant where uh, power is generated or uh, for various other purposes it's not only power uh, it is used in metallurgical processes also because uh, very high temperature can be generated because you see there are so many mirrors if uh, they all focus sunlight at a single point the flux becomes very high and high flux means you can generate very high temperature and uh, this high temperature is very much useful for uh, not only for power generation for for very metallurgical needs also in a uh, in a metallurgical uh, industry also um, in many process industries also where high temperature is required so the these heat transfer mediums uh, they they need not be all, all the time only liquid it could be solid particles also or gas also like carbon dioxide in solid particles what happened there is solid particle falling uh, in the form of a screen and they those solid particles get eliminated by these mirrors they become heat up and then they exchange heat with the heat exchanger and uh, uh, and the working fluid uh, for the power plant absorbs the heat from the solid particles and take it to the power block however this technology is still in a research phase uh, particles are not uh, actually being used on a commercial scale commercial scale uh, people are only using liquids uh, as of now so now as i discussed in the working of the solar tower uh, but let's discuss it in a great detail here so as i told the sunlight comes falls on these mirrors and gets focused on the receiver here okay now uh, the thing is that the sun keeps moving in the sky right so but we have to ensure that all these mirrors all the time focus sunlight on the receiver so that uh, we get continuous uh, hot fluid which which is being used for various industrial application or power production so to ensure that uh, that whether the sun is here or here the sunlight is all the time getting focused on the uh, uh, receiver there is a tracking system attached with all these mirrors which uh, i discussed in the earlier uh, slide that uh, there is a one of the components of the mirrors is a tracking system right what does this tracking systems do they orient these mirrors uh, 
about its two axes two axes which are in the plane of the mirror okay one uh, axis is this another axis is this so about uh, uh, so about this axis uh, this orientation takes place and then there is a one orientation uh, taking place in this direction rotation taking place in this direction so this is the two axis tracking which takes place of each of these mirrors and by doing this adjustment of mirror using the tracking system we ensure that the sunlight all the time keep falling on the receiver as the sun is moving from east to west okay when the sun is moving from east to west uh, the sunlight should all the time keep falling on the receiver that is ensured using the tracking system so this is how the tracking system works now once we have got some basic understanding of the solar tower or we also call it solar central receiver let's try to solve one problem so the problem statement is for a tracking system of a ps10 solar plant ps10 solar plant is located in uh, at a place called Sevilla. it is in a spain now here we are uh, required to find the orientation of the mirror okay and uh, out of so many mirrors uh, there is one mirror which has been picked and the position of the mirror is it is 73.5 meter east and 41.7 meter north of the receiver tower okay and the time uh, at which the, uh, we have to uh, orient that mirror the time is solar noon and the date is 21st march we know that 21st march is also known as spring equinox so for all these information we have to find the orientation of the mirror at this particular instant of time solar noon so let's list down what all the informations are given so first the location is given the location is Seville, spain and for Seville, spain the latitude is 37.4 degree and it is in the northern hemisphere so it is 37.4 degree north and then uh, the longitude is 6 degree 15 minutes uh, and it is in western hemisphere so we can also write 6 degree 15 minute west the number of mirrors in ps10 solar plant is 624 the optical height of the tower is 93.2 meter i will discuss what is optical height uh, in the next slide the time as i discussed is solar noon so for solar noon we know that the hour angle is 0 degree then the day is march 21 and for march 21 the day number is 80 it's the julian day uh, that's 80 right so the declination we know that for uh, equinox comes out to be zero degree this is the formula for declination okay 23.45 sine 360 284 plus n upon 365 and bracket close here n we have to put as 80 and we will get delta at zero degree now here uh, uh, we have tried to explain what is uh, the optical height the optical height is the distance between the center of the mirror center of uh, all the mirrors okay so there would be one uh, uh, line one plane about which all the centers of the mirror are lying the distance between the center of the mirrors and the center of the receiver this is the receiver over which uh, the sunlight is getting focused this height is called optical height right and as i told it is given to be 93.2 meter for this problem particular problem so let's uh, uh, assume few things so the first assumption is that uh, east direction this is the east direction east direction we have uh, labeled as x axis north direction we have labeled as y axis and this vertical direction we have labeled as z axis so the tower 
is in the z direction this is the tower this is the tower it is in the z direction and the uh, we have assumed that the unit vector from the mirror to the center of the receiver we are calling it r and the unit vector uh, to the sun we are calling it as s and uh, the normal to this plane mirror, mirror is has been labeled here as n okay now if we could determine this n then we would be able to determine the orientation of this mirror and we know that uh, uh, according to uh, the law of reflection that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection angle of incidence i is equal to angle of reflection r so this normal vector would be nothing but the vector sum of the unit vector s and unit vector r which has been uh, labeled here as equation number one so uh, so we have to to find the normal vector to the mirror we have to basically find the sun unit vector and the mirror to the receiver unit vector if we could find these two we will be able to find the normal to the mirror and hence we will be able to find the orientation of the mirror which is the purpose of this problem so first uh, let's find the sun unit vector okay sun unit vector so uh, we can decide the position of the sun in the sky using two angles first angle is called altitude angle and we call it alpha z and the component of uh, this uh, sun vector uh, this alpha z is the angle made by this sun vector with the plane this with the xy plane here xy is in the plane okay so the component of the sun vector in the xy plane has been shown by this dashed arrow and it will be cos alpha z right then the angle made by this component of the sun vector with the south direction is called azimuth angle we call this value capital a subscript z we call it azimuth angle this is the south direction this is the south direction so with the south direction this component of the sun vector this is the sun vector okay the component of this sun vector uh, in the xy plane will be cos alpha z and the component of this uh, cos alpha z in the south direction will be cos alpha z cos a z this is cos alpha this is cos alpha z this is cos alpha z then the component of this cos alpha z in this direction will be cos alpha z cos a z similarly the the its component in this direction that is in the waste direction this is the waste direction the waste direction would be cos alpha z sin a z cos alpha z sin a z and the component of this sun vector in the z direction would be sin a alpha z therefore we got the the three components of the sun vector sun unit vector as cos alpha z cos a z cos alpha z sin a z sin alpha z now cos alpha z cos a z is in since it is in the negative y direction because we assume the positive y direction to be north so south would be uh, negative y direction similarly we assumed east direction to be positive x direction so west direction would be the negative x direction so accordingly the sun vector becomes uh, we will put minus sign because uh, the i component 
i i represents the unit vector in the x direction j represents unit vector in the y direction and k represents unit vector in the z direction so since they are pointing in the negative directions these x and y components that's why a minus sign has been put here this way we got the sun unit vector so as i told aj is the solar azimuth angle okay this is the solar azimuth angle and alpha z is solar altitude angle so by means of just these two angles solar azimuth angle and solar altitude angle we got the sun unit vector s however there is one third angle we call it zenith angle theta z and theta z is nothing but just the complementary of the altitude angle alpha z therefore alpha z is nothing but 90 degree minus theta z and we can write we we there is a, a relation for zenith angle that relation is that cos theta z is equal to sin phi sin delta plus cos phi cos delta cos omega phi is the lat latitude of the place uh, delta is the uh, declination which we derived earlier it was coming out to be zero uh, phi is again the lat latitude and omega is the hour angle so and for the solar node it was already zero so this term became 1 this term became entirely 0 so this is 0 here and phi uh, for Seville Spain it was 37.4 degree so we substituted it here so we got theta z to be 37.4 degree so we got th theta z this way we determined alpha z so alpha z comes out to be 52.6 degree now we need to substitute alpha z here but before that we need to find solar azimuth angle also so there is a formula for solar azimuth angle as well that solar azimuth angle is given by cos az is equal to cos theta z theta z is the zenith angle phi is the latitude delta is the declination if we substitute all these values we get it to be one and this way the solar azimuth angle comes out to be zero degree so this way if we substitute uh, alpha z which we determined in the previous slide here 52.6 degree and a z 0 degree in the expression for sun unit vector sun unit vector comes out to be this value this is the sun unit vector now the next uh, thing is to find the mirror to mirror to receiver central receiver vector mirror to receiver unit vector and for that uh, this this thing is very easy to determine because we know the position of the mirror the position of the mirror according to question x is it is 73.5 meter east so x becomes 73.5 meter and it is 41.7 meter north so y becomes 41.7 meter and it is in the on the ground so my z axis is zero and this way we got the position uh, of the mirror and the position of the focus point of the receiver so uh, for, uh, uh, this uh, the light after reflection from the mirror has to hit a particular point on the receiver and that particular point is nothing but uh, is given by the optical height of the receiver uh, optical height was given in the question to be 93.2 meter okay so it is along the z axis so x and y coordinates become 0 and z becomes 93.2 meter so once we know uh, the focus point of the receiver and position of the mirror so we now uh, can easily find the mirror to receiver vector it's it would be simply the position vector of the receiver position vector of the receiver minus position vector of the mirror if we subtract these two we get the mirror to receiver vector now we have to find the unit vector so we must uh, divide this by its magnitude so we get the unit vector from the mirror to the center of the receiver to be this value so this way we got the sun unit vector and we got mirror to receiver unit vector now if we add them we get 
द नॉर्मल वेक्टर और राइट सो इफ वी डिवाइड इट बाई इट्स मैग्नीट्यूड वी गॉट नॉर्मल यूनिट वेक्टर टू द मेर टू बी दिस वेल दिस इज हाउ वी डिटरमाइन द ओरिएंटेशन ऑफ द मेरर फॉर अ पर्टिकुलर टाइम एंड अ पर्टिकुलर डे थैंक यू